The Taliban entered Afghanistan's capital of Kabul on Sunday, taking control of the presidential palace after the country's president fled. The move follows the seizure of Afghanistan's major cities after the withdrawal of American troops who had been stationed in the country for two decades. The Taliban has promised a peaceful transition, but scenes of panic are emerging from the capital as some try to flee. What does this transition mean for the country and its neighbors, and what will Afghanistan be like under the Taliban's control again, 20 years after they were ousted from power. Joining me today from Xi'an in northwest China's Shanxi province is Professor Wang Jing from the Northwest University of China. And from Doha, Dr. Luciano Zakara, Research Assistant Professor at Qatar University. Both are joining us via Zoom. Gentlemen, welcome to The Point. Um, Dr. Zakara, let me go to you first. The Taliban said on Sunday they have taken control of the presidential palace in Kabul. The uh, president, as I said, uh, Ashraf Ghani, has left the country. So what do you make of this very rapid development? What happened that, they, that the Taliban can take control of uh, the capital so fast? Well, actually, there was a miscalculation by everybody. Nobody expected this. I mean, recently, Joe Biden was saying, literally, that there was no uh, doubt that the Afghani government would be able to sustain the government for a long time mm -hmm. uh, because they had 300,000 troops prepared to defend the country. And uh, the evidence shows that the, the most of the country was controlled in one week without even uh, battle, without even uh, fighting uh, with, uh, with the troops that they decided to surrender. They decided to leave the, 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 the places to the Taliban, meaning that there was some kind of negotiation to surrender some specific areas until they reach uh, the capital. And yesterday they entered Kabul uh, without uh, also any 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 blows. So uh, literally everybody misunderstood what was going on on, on the terrain. And nobody understood that they really the Taliban had the upper hand during all this period of uh, negotiations and that they never lost um, part of the popular support that they had along these 20 years. And at the end of the day, that the government that uh, was in place for 20 years was not considered legitimate enough for the whole population to support it or to fight for against the Taliban. Mm. So basically you're saying there was some kind of a agreement or negotiation between the government and the Taliban so that the situ situation would end up like this. Uh, Dr. Wong, um, what do you think of uh, this this opinion. Do you agree? Do you think also, as uh, the uh, uh, Ghani has said, he left the country to avoid bloodshed by the people? Uh, I think uh, this is very important uh, a turning point, very turning uh, turning page inside Afghanistan history that we are uh, we are now witnessing, uh, because the negotiation uh, is there is in Doha between Afghan government's representative and uh, Afghan Taliban, but then it's the thing that really determines uh, the, the, the landscape of Afghanistan rests upon the uh, battlefield that what we are witnessing during the past weeks. Uh, and the, we have to know that the, 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 the departure of Afghan President Ghani is a very important, uh, uh, important moment because uh, Ghani left the country without the very official permission of who, is, uh, who would be his successor. And he left the country without the very uh, proper arrangement of the, what the political structure uh, after he left should be and what the political prospect in the future should be. So this means actually to some extent he deserted the country. Or he has to uh, go to the other uh, countries uh, for the consideration of very possible uh, threats or the very possible disaster for both himself and also for the for the, the, the members of his government as well as the people in Kabul. So I think it means the very uh, transformation to the new period of Afghanistan's history. But this new period is not determined, as we say, not determined by the negotiation table in Doha, not by the, the meeting between Afghan government representative and Afghan Taliban, but determined by the battlefield reality that the Afghan government has have and has to accept. So basically, uh, Professor Wong, you're saying because the uh, government troops have lost the upper hand, have lost the ability to counter the onslaught of the Taliban, therefore they had to, you know, just surrender 
without any other choices, uh, Dr. Zakara. Is that uh, your understanding as well? Let's not forget the United States has uh, been sending troops, equipment and training and possibly intelligence as well to the Afghan government forces. How come they can't, you know, even stage a proper uh, resistance, let's say, against uh, the, the, the Taliban? Well, actually, that, I think that this is the point. Uh, they didn't offer any resistance because they didn't want to. Uh, I mean, there were some fights in some areas, but at the end of the day, the way in which uh, even the, the uh, border, uh, the border's uh, uh, controls in, uh, with Pakistan and with Iran were transferred without any resistance. There were conversations uh, before starting any, any fight, and they were surrendered. Uh, meaning that at some point the Taliban they changed a kind of uh, the strategy, the strategy compared with what happened in 1990s. Instead of going everywhere with uh, arms and uh, conquering the places, uh, fighting, mm -hmm. they started to bargain or negotiating. Uh, I assume uh, kind of no retaliation or uh, preventing uh, taking uh, hostages or or killing people. Uh, and to some extent, what is uh, mentioned yesterday in the press conference that was given by the Taliban negotiator in Doha, that they want to create an inclusive government. So I assume that in the, in the coming days, we are going to see whether these promises will be fulfilled or not. Mm -hmm. That in order to get the control of the whole country, they uh, are offering different tribes, different segments of uh, Afghan society, participation to some extent mm -hmm. in the kind of new government that will be created. But it seems that the Americans were completely in the dark, Professor Wong. It seems that they had not foreseen the situation or their intelligence or the information that they gathered were uh, directly, direct, directing them to some other prospect. What happened with the U.S. intelligence? I mean, we all heard U.S. President Joe Biden talking um, end of July that the Afghan government would be able to be in place to sustain the government for some time to come. I think it is actually a shock to everybody, including the United States, because actually the United States, they have a very uh, a network of intelligence uh, establishments inside Afghanistan. They have the experience and they have uh, with the local people, with uh, local authorities and also central government as well as uh, Afghan security forces. So mm -hmm. uh, I mean, before we all thought that maybe that United States uh, can have uh, kind of the, uh, the the confidence that the United uh, the Afghan government can can maintain longer than uh, maybe than than two years or three years after the United States withdrew. But then uh, we, we we witnessed that it failed. Even that before the United States totally withdrew, or complete completed that the Afghan Taliban now reached the, the capital, the Kabul. So. Uh, I think that the what went wrong? That they... Yeah, exactly. The question, you know, what went wrong with their yeah. intelligence services that they couldn't foresee this at all? I think the I, I think they ignore some kind of the very important devices because the on the one hand they overestimate the capability of again uh, national security forces. They, maybe they look at number three hundred thousand uh, personnel. Mm -hmm. so that's a big amount. And they also maybe they have look at the equipment. Okay, the hardware is good, but well, compared with the Afghan Taliban, they are just uh, the the local militias mm -hmm. or in the in the southern areas. So maybe they just look at it. So some of the important devices from uh, maybe they had they had heard, but they ignored it or if they got, they forgot it. Well, on the other hand, I think they also underestimate the the, the very complicated complicating uh, situation inside Afghanistan because Afghanistan is a very important city that with very complicating uh, geopolitical right. as well as the ethnic uh, diversity so this are something very complicating I think the United States ignore something important and underestimate something important so that's why it leads to the very miscalculation of themselves that is still very difficult to, to fathom. To fathom, I mean, Dr. Zakara, if you think about the kind of uh, powerful intelligence apparatus the U.S. is, uh, you know, claims to have the kind of intelligence they must be able to gather, and the fact that they have been on the ground for 20 years, I mean, they must know how complex the situation is, and yet it seems that they have failed themselves uh, in coming up with uh, the right strategy and the right intelligence and judgment over how things were going. Dr. Zakara, how do you look at the reasons why the U.S.'s uh, administration failed to foresee to such great extent what was going to happen? Well, actually, it's very difficult to reply to that question because this is a question we have been asking ourselves 
since a long time ago, mm -hmm. why the United States, despite all the efforts and despite all the resources they are investing in intelligence, mm -hmm. In, 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 in knowing in the, the, the ground in, in, in the occupying a country, trying to establish network uh, networks uh, among the society, among the institutions, among the political elite, they are not able to see what is going on. Uh, I mean, the, the interview that uh, gave uh, Biden a few days ago is clearly a demonstration on, on how misled was uh, the American president without knowing what is going on. And this is something that has been repeated in Iraq, in Iran, in many other countries in the region. Uh, uh, but one can one can think that this is a conclusion on how uh, complicated it is for the United States to have a very clear uh, policy in the Middle East and how difficult it is to sustain a policy in the Middle East uh, for a long time when they uh, made so many mistakes in the last 30 or 40 years uh, in, in the whole Middle East, and how it's possible for the United States to continue to be uh, the power in the regions if they are not able to read what is going on in the in the Middle Eastern societies uh, without knowing how tribal society works, without knowing religious values, tribal values, uh, affiliations, loyalties, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I, I think this is going to happen. I think that the, uh, the withdrawal of the United States uh, from Afghanistan cannot be at all considered a victory. Uh, this is a defeat, a defeat of the whole strategy of the United States in mm. the Middle East. And seriously, Biden needs to, uh, an, an American uh, political elite needs to think again what they are doing in the, in the Middle East. Mm. It is uh, very, it's almost surreal, right, for us to see the footage of Taliban, Taliban leaders and soldiers and members uh, in the presidential palace in Kabul and other residences, the former senior Afghan officials. Um, Professor Wang, what do you make of such scenes? What have led us to this point? Uh, I think it's, it's a kind of the, 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 uh, the, the, the reverse of the new uh, waves of the political powers inside the Afghanistan. Because uh, before the United States withdraw from Afghanistan, uh, given the United States presence in this country, given the United States very large amount of the military personnel as well as uh, economic and military assistance to the Afghan government. So it means that the United States have to maintain a kind of the, uh, balance inside the country uh, on the side of uh, Afghan government. But uh, after the United States decided to withdraw, I mean, gradually, or in some areas, they, they just withdraw completely, uh, suddenly, without information of the, of the Afghan government, without the knowledge of the Afghan government. So this, this led to the very sudden uh, imbalance in some kind of region. And uh, imbalance and imbalance again, uh, one and another, led to the very total collapse of the old uh, balance in this battlefield as well, the political structure, and led to the new uh, landscape of the uh, political structure inside Afghanistan. So that's finally that was what we saw, the, the, the coming of the Afghan Taliban into the political uh, uh, centers of the provinces and also led the soldiers of Afghan uh, Taliban went to the, uh, the very presidential palace and mm -hmm. other important architectures yeah. of the uh, yes, of the leaders, the local leaders and the central yeah. government leaders. There, seem, there seems to be some uh, contradiction in the description of perception by the general, by the local people towards the news. If you read different media from different regions, you might have very different impressions. For instance, if you read a uh, newspaper in the Arabic uh, regions, you kind of feel the situation has been really peaceful. Whereas if you read other sources, you might feel there are panic, at least hidden panic, at least great uh, uncertainty. So Dr. Zakara, exactly what is the situation? What is the psyche of the local people towards the latest development? Well, I think that both media are reflecting two different situations. There are areas in which the transition is uh, being more pacific and there are less stress uh, or stressful situation for the population. And in other areas like Kabul, where uh, the people that they were more related to the foreign uh, forces are the people that they are more against uh, the Taliban rule are more worried about the, the, the future. And there is where you can find the images uh, this uh, morning, all the images of people trying to, to escape uh, in, in the last airplanes in the airport are, are, are terrible. Mm. I, I, don't think, I don't think they are fake. Um, 
uh, videos, of course. Uh, but I think that it's reflecting the a mixed uh, situation along the whole country. In some places, the, the cities were surrendered to the Taliban, and it is expected that in some regions the, the rule of the Taliban will be more uh, mild. In mm -hmm. other places, it will be more tough, depending on how the population is, is receiving the Taliban. And it depends on how the rule is established. Uh, yesterday, again, in the interview provided by the, by the spokesperson of the, the Taliban in Doha, mm -hmm. he was expressing which would be the policies of the Taliban mm -hmm. once uh, they establish the, the, new, uh, the new Emirate. However, what we all know is that not all the Taliban groups or the Taliban, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the tribes that belong to the Taliban mm. groups are the same. And it depends on how they implement the rules in different uh, provinces of yeah. Afghanistan, it will be different. So it's difficult to claim that the centralized government in Kabul would, will implement the same strict uh, laws in all the provinces. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where we can see some kind of inclusivity in the government. In the Hazaras uh, areas, in the much more Pashtun areas, mm -hmm. it will be different style, because what I think the, the Taliban learned in this last 20 or 30 years is that they cannot uh, rule the whole country without counting with other groups as well. Mm. Whether we okay. like it or not, the Taliban, they change their, their diploma yeah. diplomatic style, and they might have changed also the, the, the ruling style. It's uh, definitely a fast uh, developing situation and we'll be keeping a close watch on the situation. Many thanks to my guests, uh, Dr. Luciano Zakara joining us from Doha University and Professor Wang Jing joining us from Northwest University of China.